while almost everything in this paid off, I do think that the kid at school, was his name Sophus or something, and Big Man, those two really didn't pay off. I think we saw Sophus later, and it was sort of suggested that he was maybe chummy with Christian now, but really, those two, but really, in those two cases, it kind of seemed like the revenge did work. You know, what Christian said in the car. You hit them once, you hit them hard enough, and they won't hit you back. I think it would have been good if there had been something more about Big Man, or at least, maybe, something to remind us that Yes, he's gone, but he had a second-in-command who's just gonna take right over for him. I also am not entirely clear on what, like, I think it was the last shot was supposed to signify. I guess it kind of mirrors the first shot, or one of the first at least, with, you know, all these African kids running after the car, and I guess they're yelling in... African, you know, it's translated into, hey there, hey there, you know, and they're happy and things seem good. I don't know, it kind of felt like those two things weren't really wrapped up. I do completely get that there was the whole revenge thing in that Big Man had made so many enemies, you know, everybody in that camp hated him. So the moment he was weak, they jumped on him. You know, every last one of them. But I do think that we needed some... But I do think that should have ended with the reminder that things are still bad there. About Sophus, though, I did kind of like... I think this was maybe intentional. Christian, at least like the first two times, the teacher or headmaster, whatever, said you're all very sorry, right? The first two times, he didn't say anything. You know, the third time he did say it, and he did do the handshake, but then right out in the hallway, Christian, you know, walks with Elias, not Sophus. I liked how there was consequence to at least most of these things. The other Danish film, My Best Enemy, was going for some of the same, but forgot the consequences a lot of the time. You know, here, when Christian beats down Sophus, they actually have the police, the headmaster gets involved, the parents, and how perfect a depiction of how utterly clueless school officials are was that. I do think that the first classroom scene just took it a little bit too far with just how impossible these children were and how much they even there bullied Elias and teased, especially for kids who are 10 or 11 or around there. I mean, they're at that, I mean, they're at that in-between age where they have a little bit more self-control than when they were just pure children and they aren't chock full of those hormones that they haven't yet learned to control once they become teenagers. Once the knife is found, the police don't really seem to get involved, but I don't think that either of the parents actually informed the police. I think once Elias' mother found it, she just went pretty much straight to Ulrich Thompson's character, Anton, maybe and he just talked directly to his son about it. It was, of course, kind of cliche how suddenly the sadistic crime lord needs a doctor, and the thing with Elias running up to prevent other people from getting harmed by the bomb. I mean, we saw that in the butterfly effect. There it felt a little bit more original than here. With that said, in both cases, it worked. I'm sorry, son, it's been a very stressful day. Wait, how can we even be having this video chat? Neither of us have a webcam. 
Does it hurt a lot? It's okay, they gave me pills. And it's really quite groovy, Mr. Talking Lamb. For a while it didn't seem like Christian's character was going to have more than that one side to him where he was constantly seeking to right the wrongs in the immediate vicinity, at least. But once it enters the second half, we do get some more sides to that character. And honestly, it does make a lot of sense. Basically, Christian has grown up an only child. They clearly have a pretty decent sum of money. I mean, it's established that they've moved several times. He's used to getting his way. He's used to being fairly in control. Suddenly, his mother dies. Trust me, that's kind of the thing that you think will never ever happen. It, suddenly, he feels weak, powerless. He tries to find situations where he won't be powerless, and he kind of refuses to be weak and powerless. You know, when he first meets Elias's tormentors, he very bullheadedly not only stands his ground, but outright provokes them. And after that, there's a very clear emphasis on him fighting the fear, fighting those that inspire fear. Sofas, Lars, in spite of how clearly Elias demonstrates that there is nothing to fear from Lars, and clearly he himself does want to do more deep down, probably part of why he's so gutsy when dealing with the big man, Christian still tries to more directly fight them. He also very clearly himself has a fear of death and a little bit of an obsession with it, maybe. You know, asking his father, what will you do, where will you live, if I die? That line about the cancer had warped her brain or what it was, I'm not sure that that's entirely accurate. I mean, I would think that once it reaches the brain, it really goes very downhill, extremely fast, to the point where you really can't say, okay, at this point, clearly her brain had deteriorated from it, but more like, okay, it's reached the brain, she's now dead. But then again, I don't know everything about it. I did like how they treated the mother's death from both angles. Christian's perception of it and his father's perception. And the thing with, you gave up on her, I can't stand when people give up, and the father pointing out that near the end she got to be very cruel, very bitter, that's a very important thing to get to say out loud. I believe Stephen King also brought this up in, I think, Pet Cemetery. I don't know, I haven't read it or watched it. You know, because yes, it is a really painful fact to admit, but it's not going to go away by us ignoring it. Not everything gets better or goes away by facing it straight, but absolutely nothing goes away by it being ignored and not at all talked about. When we, when we refuse to talk about it, a lot of people just go around feeling like they're the only ones that feel that way. It isn't wrong to admit that, yes, near the end, this person maybe became different, wasn't the person you loved. The important thing is to remember what they were like before that, not let that get lost just because that person maybe changed near the end. Anyway, just my two cents on the subject. The mark of a great movie, it gives you something to talk about. Those were my thoughts on Hilton or Civilization. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.